Great. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, if you are a student viewing this, I want you to know that you are not on camera. And I have messed up my screen share. Can you see that, Garrett? I can, yeah. All right, present. There we go. Um, and you are also on mute, so no worries. We cannot see or hear you. If you would like to ask a question, please be sure to type it into the Q&A section, and Garrett will get to it as, um, as he is able. Um, we encourage you to sign up for more sessions at IACAC.org. Um, and you can come back and view this and other sessions again, again at IACAC.org. Thanks. Go ahead, Garrett. Right. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to share my screen with everybody um, just so that you're able to see the PowerPoint presentation that I put together for you. Here we go. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Welcome, um, Illinois students. Um, thank you to all of you who are either watching live or if you are tuning in later on um, and viewing this as a recording, uh, welcome. Um, thank you StriveScan and IACAC for putting this on. Uh, my name is Garrett Silker. I am one of the admissions counselors at the University of Wisconsin La Crosse. Um, and I am the non-resident um, admissions counselor there. So I primarily recruit and uh, inform students from Illinois about everything that UW La Crosse has to offer um, them as students. Um, so as I'm kind of going through this presentation, um, I think it's very important for me to explain a little bit about the city of La Crosse. Um, because most non-resident students that I talk to, they're generally not too familiar with um, the city of La Crosse. Um, so La Crosse, Wisconsin is a city of about 52,000 people. Um, if we're incorporating outlying suburbs surrounding the area, it's a metropolitan area of around 135,000 people. Um, as you can see from the lovely pictures that I've provided you, um, there is elevation in the city of La Crosse, which um, a lot of the places that I visit down in Illinois, that is not so much the case. Um, so the elevation that you see is actually the bluffs. Um, they kind of cradle the city of La Crosse, um, and it's just really pretty. There's lots of mountain biking and hiking trails all over the bluffs. There's actually rock climbing routes um, on the rock faces of some of those bluffs as well. So if you're interested in rock climbing, it's a very popular growing um, outdoor activity in the city of La Crosse too. Um, aside from the bluffs, we're also fortunate enough to be nestled right on the mighty Mississippi River. So um, water and boating culture are very important to us in the city of La Crosse. There's actually a water skiing competition uh, every year in the summer where they perform the water skiing pyramids. And then every weekend in the fall, there's actually a log rolling competition. So if you're anything like me and you love to see um, strangers falling in water, that's always a great way to spend a Saturday or Sunday afternoon. Um, we're also fortunate enough to have the Mississippi Queen in the city of La Crosse. It's a big paddle boat that comes through the city of La Crosse, great for leisure cruises up and down the Mississippi River as well. Uh, what's really interesting about the city of La Crosse is the fact that it is in fact a college town. Um, that's probably a term that you've heard a lot um, from different presentations that maybe you've um, watched, but La Crosse really is a quintessential college town. Um, there's three universities in the city of La Crosse. There's UW La Crosse, obviously, and then there's Viterbo University, which is a four-year private Catholic university on the south side of La Crosse. And then there's also Western Technical College, which is actually just down the road from our university where we receive hundreds of transfer students every single year um, that continue on and graduate from UW La Crosse. What's really great about exploring the historic downtown La Crosse area is that you're typically not going to see a lot of chains. Um, the only chain that's really popular in the city of La Crosse is actually uh, the Quick Trip gas stations. That's because the Quick Trip headquarters is in the city of La Crosse. Um, but you're going to see a lot of mom and pop shops, small businesses. Um, we really have a lot of pride in the city of La Crosse on shopping local and having and encouraging people to visit those small businesses that some of them have been open for well over 50 years. Um, as far as being a college student in the city of La Crosse, one thing that's very important, especially um, thinking about being a high school student going to college is how am I gonna get around? Um, chances are, if you're viewing this as an Illinois resident, La Crosse is gonna be about four, four and a half hour drive from you if you're from 
the Chicagoland area. Um, so maybe it's not going to be possible for you to bring your own personal cars. So you're going to want to know how to get around. A ride board program is actually a Facebook group that you have to have a UW Lacrosse email account to be a part of. And it works one of two ways if you're a student with a car or a student without a car. So if I'm a student without a car and I'm from the Chicagoland area and I'm a student at UW Lacrosse, I just post on the ride board Facebook group saying, hey, I'm looking at heading to the Schaumburg area this coming weekend. Um, I'll meet you in front of the student union on campus at four o'clock and then you chip in for gas and tolls. And it's a great way to be able to meet fellow students on campus that maybe aren't in your academic discipline, um, but it's also a great way to get to know students on campus that are maybe from your surrounding area that you didn't have a chance to go to high school with. <coughs> we also have a train depot in the city of La Crosse that will take you to a lot of the rail stations down in the Chicago metro area. There's also bus systems in the city of La Crosse. The city bus system is probably the most popular way for students to be able to get in around the city of La Crosse. Um, there's multiple bus stops all over campus and it's free for you to use because your student ID works as your city bus pass as a UW La Crosse student. There's also the Jefferson bus system, which will take you in around the Chicago land area. So that's a quick, easy way to get a ride back home as well. And then there's also the Badger bus system. Maybe you have friends who are going to other UW system schools. You just wanna get together with them on a weekend, but you don't have your own car hop on the Badger bus and it takes you to a lot of the four as well as the two-year branch campuses in the UW system. In the world of COVID-19, getting to college campuses might be a little bit difficult. So what we've actually done on campus is we have broadly expanded our outreach to students, non-resident, transfer students, all the different kinds of students that we're trying to recruit to our campus through our various social media pages. Uh, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, give us a follow on any of those pages to find out what we're doing on campus and then some unique things that we're doing on campus and maybe you want to be a part of that someday. Just a couple things I want to brag about quick. Um, UW Lacrosse has actually been voted on Kipling's Finance Magazine as a best value university for over a decade. So that pairs the modest cost that students pay to attend our university with the high quality of education that they receive as students on our campus. Um, you UW La Crosse has been voted the number three Midwest public university by US News and Report this year as well. <clears throat> A little bit about our student population on campus. Who are our students here at UW La Crosse? Our entire student body encompasses around 10,500 students. We are predominantly an undergraduate university. We have around 9,700 undergraduate students on our campus. That means that the bulk majority of resources that we have on our campus that ranges from scholarships to financial aid to programming is all really geared and generated for that undergraduate student population. So you guys as first year college degree seeking students are really the priority that we're making on our college campus. Every single year, we have around an incoming freshman class size of around 21 to 2200 students. For that incoming freshman class size, we usually receive about six to 7,000 applications, meaning we could easily be a much larger university than we are, but we like maintaining the size that we are because of the benefits that it really gives a lot of our students on campus. One of the big benefits of being a UW lacrosse student is our average class size is usually between 25 and 30 students in a single class. Now, don't let me fool you. We do typically, we do also have larger classes on our campus that seat anywhere from 50, maybe upwards of 100 students. But just to give you a general idea, last spring, we taught around 1300 courses on our campus and less than 30 of those classes had more than 50 students in it. So the 28, 25 to 30 students is really the average that you're going to find on our campus. For every 19 students on our campus, we have at least one faculty member. You're going to be able to build really personal relationships with your professors on our campus. One of the other benefits of being a medium-sized university, excuse me, <coughs> is that every single class that you ever take on our university is going to be taught by a faculty professor. We don't have any teaching assistants or graduate students teaching any classes on our campus. That is huge when it comes to the high quality education that you're going to receive as a student on our campus. Let's talk about what it's like to live on campus. Um, as a student going into your first year living on your college campus, you are really never going to have another living experience in your entire life like that very first year living on your college campus. 
Um, the good thing about being a student at UW-La Crosse is the bulk majority of our first year students want to live on campus. They want that first year living experience on our campus um, and really to be part of the UW-La Crosse community. 97% of our incoming freshmen decide that they want to be a part of that experience and they want to live in one of the residence halls that we offer on campus. We do have 11 residence halls in total on campus, but only 10 of them are available for first year students. We do offer two different styles of residence halls for our first year students. We have a suite style residence hall, which you'll see in that bottom picture with the three gentlemen sitting down there. That is known as Eagle Hall. It is the largest and newest residence hall that we have on campus. The biggest difference between living over in Eagle Hall and living in one of our traditional residence halls is the addition of a third roommate. So in Eagle Hall, you have three students sharing one bedroom, and then you have an adjoining room that also has three students in it. Those two rooms are shared by a Jack and Jill style bathroom. Don't worry, the doors do have locks on both sides, so you can optimize your privacy in that room as well. But that is probably the biggest difference because if you were living over in the traditional residence hall, it's very similar to what you've seen in TV and movies or maybe on other college campuses where you have two students sharing one room and then you have a communal bathroom on the floor of those residence halls as well for all of the students who live on those floors um, to share. We offer a couple different styles of traditional residence halls. You have wing style and you have cube style residence halls. The only difference is really the layout of the rooms in which the students live. All of our residence halls on campus are co-ed. They do vary, however, in how co-ed they are. Some of them are gonna be co-ed by floor, where you have a couple floors of all male students, or a floor of all male students, followed by a floor of all female students, and so on and so forth. We also have wing style residence halls, where you have a couple floors of all male students, a couple floors of all female students that are generally separated by a common space in between, usually a study lounge. We do have one residence hall on campus that is co-ed by room, and that is known as Sanford Hall. So always leave that up to the student and maybe more importantly, the parents' comfort level of who they want their students' neighbors to be going into that first year of college. We want UW La Crosse to be a safe space for every single student on our campus, which is why we offer gender inclusive housing. That means that students on our campus can, <coughs> excuse me, can select their roommate based on how they identify as an individual. So if you identify as a gender separate than what you were assigned to at birth, you can elect to have your roommate based on how you identify as an individual. We've been fortunate enough at UW La Crosse to have a lot of growth. This is another question that I would have you ask um, around at college campuses that you're either visiting or you're thinking about applying to. Um, how many buildings on that campus have been built within the past five years, 10 years? 15 years. Every single building that you see on this slide has either been built or has been currently in construction in the past five years. That's a lot of growth that we've been able to have on our campus in a very short amount of time. The student Union on campus is brand new. It's a little over two years old and it's really the living room of our college campus. There's um, fireplace lounges, full-size movie theater, restaurants, uh, coffee shops, sandwich shops, all kinds of different places, bank, card office, all in this one building. It's a great place to be able to relax and unwind. It's also the home for our campus bookstore, as well as our textbook rental office, which I'll talk about a little bit later on. The Prairie Springs Science Center. If any of you watching are really interested in the natural sciences, this building is going to be your brand new home for the next four years earning that degree. There are multitude of dedicated labs in this building. It's an $83 million science lab only facility. There are no lectures that take place in this entire building. It's all lab space. The second floor of this building is the home for 23 individual research labs. That's research labs for both faculty on campus, but also for undergraduate students as well. It's also home for our human cadaver lab on campus. This is huge for students who wanna go into the medical field after they earn their college degree. The Recreational Eagle Center, or REC, uh, as it's known on campus, we were able to do a large expansion of this building uh, a little over two years ago. It's our workout space on campus. Um, so indoor turf, 
uh, tons of ellipticals, treadmills for students to be able to use, weightlifting facilities. There's a suspended track in this building as well. So if you like running and you don't want to go outside in those cold Wisconsin winters, have no fear. You do not have to go outside. Indoor rock climbing wall, racquetball, squash court. There's also an outdoor connection area where you can rent different outdoor equipment. So maybe you really want to go on a mountain biking trail, you can rent a mountain bike. Or you want to head down to the river for an afternoon, feel free to rent a kayak or canoe. Or maybe you just want to take a nap outside, you can certainly rent a hammock from here too and hang it up on some very strategically placed trees all over campus. Our new student field house is currently under construction on campus right now. It'll be ready in about two to three years. Fingers crossed that the construction finishes on time. And it's gonna be the new home for our men and women's indoor track and field. Um, it's also gonna have four NCAA regulated tennis courts inside of there as well. It's not just gonna be for our athletes on campus, but for our general student body to use as well. There's also gonna be dedicated labs and classroom space inside of this building for our exercise and sports science program as well. Whittock Hall is the newest construction that we just wrapped up this fall. It's the new home for our College of Business Administration. It used to be where we um, taught our physical education teachers. Whittock Hall is the second oldest building on campus. It was originally built back in 1916. And it used to have an indoor basketball court and an indoor swimming pool in it. Back in 1916, that was groundbreaking. You didn't have too many buildings in the United States that had those kind of facilities. The really cool thing about the construction of this building is it's a historic building on campus. So we weren't able to knock it down. So you have the really old brick and vine collegiate look on the outside, but very new and modern on the inside. And a lot of those old building materials were actually repurposed all the wood paneling that you see throughout the building is the repurposed gymnasium floor and all of the green tile that you see throughout the building in the bathrooms and on the floor spaces is all the repurposed old pool that was in this building as well. There are many different colleges and schools that make up the University of Wisconsin Lacrosse. Just want to have a chance to talk a little bit about them. The College of Business Administration, this is an internationally accredited college on our campus. We offer nine different majors inside the School of Business. An international accreditation means that upon graduating from UW Cross, you can go out and be qualified for any jobs outside of the continent United States without having to worry about taking any additional college classes to qualify for those jobs. It's home for two of our more popular majors on campus, which are business marketing and business finance. It's also home for our international business program where you have to be fluent in a foreign language in order to graduate. And you also have to experience some form of study abroad in order to graduate as, as well. It's also home for our accountancy program where our students looking at going into jobs in CPA firms have a 91% pass rate the very first time they take that CPA exam. College of Arts, Social Sciences, Humanities is home for our more liberal arts degrees on campus, English, history, um, psychology, sociology, anthropology. It's also home for one of our more unique majors on campus, and that is our archaeology program. We are one of two universities in the entire Midwest and one of the few universities in the entire country that offers an archaeology major. We actually have an archaeology lab on campus, and we also have a dig site that's associated with this program along the Mississippi River. The Ho-Chunk Nation is a, very, um, is a very deep part of the history in the city of La Crosse. So a lot of the artifacts are from the Ho-Chunk Nation that are either donated back to the Ho-Chunk people or put on display in Ho-Chunk museums or art galleries all over the city of La Crosse. We also offer majors through the College of Arts, Social Science, Humanities in three different languages on campus, Spanish, French, and German. School of Visual and Performing Arts is available for students who maybe want to pursue degrees on stage, maybe in music performance or um, theatrical arts. There's also some behind the scenes majors as well. One of our professors on campus in the School of Visual and Performing Arts actually used to work on Sesame Street. And one of our graduates um, is actually working behind the scenes in, at Saturday Night Live in sound editing. The School of Education is a very special place for everyone who works and attends UW La Crosse. It's a school that we first started with back in 1909. Back then we were known as the La Crosse Normal School. Normal School back then was known as a teacher's college. Tuition to attend uh, the Normal School of La Crosse to earn your teaching degree was only $8 back in 1909. 
College has certainly changed a lot in over 100 years, but we're still making great teachers to this day. <coughs> we have a licensing board inside the School of Education. So whether or not you want to attend um, and earn a teaching license in Wisconsin, or maybe you want to move back to Illinois and earn your teaching license in Illinois, you have the flexibility to be able to do that. We also offer a wide range of age groups for you to be able to work with, ranging from early childhood all the way up to high schoolers. College of Science and Health is the largest college on our campus. We enroll well over 3,000 students inside the College of Science and Health. It is home for our most popular major on campus, which is a biology, where we offer a wide range of emphases for you to get very specific in what area of biology you want to earn your degree in, whether it's cellular, molecular biology, plant and fungal, or biomedical science. College of Science and Health is also home for a number of our pre-professional track programs. So whether or not you're thinking about going on to med school, chiropractic school, or pharmacy school, we have a wide range of pre-professional track programs as well. Where would all the academics be on campus if it wasn't for the student support services or the student services, excuse me, that were backing them up? We offer a wide range of student services on campus. Academic advising for students who maybe are undecided, they can help you select that major that you're gonna go on and earn that degree in. All of our students are paired with an academic advisor on campus to help them better pursue their academic goals. Our Office of Multicultural Student Services is there to support our diverse student population on campus and our students of color. Student Support Services, this is a TRIO program for our low-income college students, first-generation college students, and students with a documented disability. We also have our Access Center for any of those students who do have mental, physical, um, disabilities that need accommodations or modifications inside the classroom. We also have our Office of Career Services to make our students as successful going into the career field as they were coming to our college campus fresh out of high school. We offer tons of different support services on our campus that range from tutoring centers to writing labs, all the kinds of different support services that students are looking for to be the most successful college student that they can possibly be. There's a wide variety of different student activities that we offer on our campus. Um, educational opportunities like study abroad, undergraduate research, um, internship opportunities, wide range of different internships as well as undergraduate research programs at the University of Wisconsin La Crosse. For undergraduate research, we actually have scholarship programs and grants that are solely dedicated towards that research opportunity whether it's for travel or for instruments or tools, there are different grants to help students be able to perform the research that they want. Um, NCAA Division III athletics on our campus, if you are interested at all in any athletic um, Division III sport on our campus, please fill out the Recruit Me button on the athletics page of our website. It's a direct line of communication right to the coaches for those individual sports. Intramural sports and sport clubs. Intramural sports are probably the most popular way that our students are involved on our college campus. Um, there's a wide range of either traditional as well as non-traditional sports for you to be able to be involved in through the intramural program. Just get together with a group of your friends, go out, have a good time. Sport clubs vary from intramural sports because they are coached programs and there is a small fee um, for travel, facilities fees, you still get to represent UWL on your shirt or jersey and travel and compete against other UW system schools. Arts programs, theater programs, and music programs. For our theater programs, we have seven different uh, major theatrical productions every single year. Favorites on Broadway, plays, musicals, a lot of them too are original student productions on campus as well. Various music programs. Um, the biggest thing to be aware of with these is that there is audition process that, process that goes along with them. So if you do wanna be a part of any of our bands, orchestras, or choir ensembles on campus, just be aware of those deadlines for those audition processes. For clubs and organizations, we have over 220 student organizations on our campus. So there's really no shortage of ways for you to be able to get involved. If you're feeling a little overwhelmed by all this, don't worry. Your very first week on our campus, we do a huge activities fair to be able to demonstrate all the great ways that are available for you to be able to get involved on our campus. Now to get into a little bit about our admissions process. Um, Courseware is the number one thing that we're going to be looking at when we're thinking about evaluating a student for admission to our university. How many years of math, English, science, and social studies classes have you taken in high school? We want to see 
four years of those core subjects on your transcript to be able to make a really good decision to admit you to our university. Class rank and GPA. We also understand that a lot of schools are moving away from ranking you as students. So if you don't have a class rank on your transcript or your report card, don't worry about it. We're just gonna take a closer look at your GPA and the types of classes that you took to earn that GPA. One of the biggest changes that we have made to our admissions process this year in the world of COVID-19 is we have become a test optional university. That means that you can both be admitted to our university and be considered for merit-based scholarships without ever needing to send an ACT or an SAT score to us. That is huge for you guys. It gives you a better opportunity to really show us based on the coursework that you've done throughout your four years of high school to see if you are gonna be a good fit for the University of Wisconsin La Crosse. Inside your application, it is a great spot to be able to demonstrate all of your leadership qualities, all the extracurricular activities that you've been able to do, we require two essay questions to be answered as part of our application. If there's a part of your story that you wanna tell, maybe a great triumph or maybe some hard times that you've had throughout your life, your essays are a great place to be able to do that. Letters of recommendation can also help add to that story too. If you have a guidance counselor, a teacher, a coach, that can really help tell that part of your story as well. We wanna hear about it. Letters of recommendation are entirely optional if you do want to submit letters of recommendation, we just ask that you limit it to two letters of recommendation. This slide is going to tell you a little bit more about that course rigor that I was talking about. I really want you to pay attention to that maroon column. Four years of English, math, science, and social studies. Let's talk about three years of a foreign language. It is not a requirement to take three years of a foreign language to get into the University of Wisconsin La Crosse. There is some added benefits though, and those come in the form of our placement test. We require placement tests in math and English after students are admitted to our university. There are three optional placement tests in math, or not math, um, Spanish, French, and German. If you place into a higher level class, maybe Spanish 205, which is higher than our introductory level class, and you pass that class with a grade of a B or higher, we will not only give you credit for the class you just passed, but retroactive credit for the sequence of classes that came before it. Many students who take advantage of this are well on their way to a foreign language minor by only paying to take one class on our campus. That is huge savings for you throughout your four years of college. Now comes the simple process of how to apply to our university. We are not on the common application. We are only on the UW system application. You can find us at apply.wisconsin.edu the pri priority deadline for application is February 1st. This lines up really well with the priority deadline for the FAFSA, which is a free application for federal student aid. It also lines up really well with our on-campus scholarship application deadline. Those are the UWL Foundation scholarships. As long as you apply for those by February 1st, you will be given full consideration for a lot of different on-campus scholarships, which is great because it's one simple scholarship application for dozens of different scholarship opportunities on campus. We practice what's called rolling admission at UW La Crosse. That means that we are constantly in the process of receiving and evaluating applications to our university. We're not waiting for November 1 to release early decisions. We're not waiting for January 1 to release general admission. We are always in the process of informing students whether or not they were admitted to our university. Before we can give you that information though, we need a couple things from you. We obviously need your completed UW system application with your two essays. We also have a $25 fee that goes along with our application. We also offer UW system application fee waivers for anybody who would need it. High school transcripts. These can be either official copies sent from your high school or unofficial copies that you just email to the admissions office yourselves. Again, just want to reiterate this again, ACT and SAT scores are entirely optional. Full consideration for admission and full consideration for merit-based scholarships without ever needing to send any version of your ACT or SAT scores to our campus. Let's break down all of the costs that's associated with attending the University of Wisconsin La Crosse. We are a part of the Midwest Student Exchange Program. This is an academically competitive tuition rate that comes to about 150% of in-state tuition. It is incredibly academically competitive though. This last year, the average student who received it received an e either a 30 or higher on the ACT 
or 1300 or higher on the SAT. This year, however, we are not gonna be using standardized test scores to make those awarding decisions. We're gonna be relying more heavily on your cumulative high school GPA, preferably your unweighted GPA, and the types of classes that you took to earn that GPA. Yes, course rigor is gonna become a factor in our scholarship awarding for the Midwest Student Exchange Program. Our non-resident students, you can see the rate um, that is paid right there if you are not awarded the Midwest Student Exchange Program. Let's talk about what's all included inside your tuition and fees. Every single semester, you have the freedom and flexibility to take between 12 and 18 semester credits. That means that if you wanna take four classes one semester, totaling about 12 credits, and then crank it up a notch the next semester and take six classes, which will come out to be around 18 credits, you don't have to pay any more money those semesters to take those additional classes. This gives you a lot of freedom and flexibility, particularly if maybe you have med school or another post-secondary degree on your mind after you earn your undergraduate degree. Textbook rental, yes, that means that you don't ever have to worry about buying any of the textbooks that you need for any of your classes on our campus. Our textbook rental office charges a $73 annual fee for you to be able to rent every single textbook that you will need for your classes on campus. This is thousands of dollars in savings for you throughout your four years of college. Also, use of the Recreational Eagle Center. Yes, your gym membership is included as well. Use of a city bus pass, that's your student ID. Just flash it when you hit on, get on the city bus and away you go. Use of the Student Health Center. Healthcare is free on our campus. Um, we hope you don't get sick during your time at UW La Crosse, but if you do, just head down to the Student Health Center. You don't have to worry about any insurance networks or premium costs. Admission into any regular season sporting events. You don't have to wait in long lines to earn season tickets. You can go and support our athletics programs anytime that you would like to. I hope you all learned a lot from me. Um, my contact information, again, my name is Garrett Silker. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at gsilker at uwlax.edu or feel free to call me. My number is 608-785-8072. If you haven't had a chance yet to either virtually or schedule an in-person visit to our campus, we are currently doing both. So we are doing um, a lot of virtual visit options. Um, we have a pre-recorded virtual tour that you can take. Um, we have a flyover. If you just wanna have a chance to see more of where we're located and what's around the city of La Crosse, you can check that flyover. We are also scheduling in-person campus tours. So you can either do a guided tour with an admissions presentation or you can do a self-guided tour yourself for a curbside pickup. So just let us know if you're gonna be on campus. We will have somebody on campus bring a folder of information out to your vehicle. And then on that um, visit option, there's all sorts of QR codes that are associated with different buildings on campus. So you just scan the QR code and listen to information about those buildings as you walk around our campus at your own leisure. Hope you all have a great evening or a great day whenever you're viewing this. Thank you all for having me and hopefully I'll see you on campus very soon. Thank you all and have a good night.